All right, well, uh, welcome everyone. That's what I thought might happen. <laughs> We're a little bit early. Um, so let's just wait for the, the stragglers. In your face. So if you're here to, to hear me sing uh, Halle Joomla, it's not going to happen, I'm afraid. Um, I'm going to start charging for that. <laughs> um, inspired by Sander, who always brings through waffles to his, uh, to his uh, talks, um, I brought something from Denmark, which is not as nice as through waffles at all. If you're brave, pass it around. These are very, very uh, kind of spicy, salty um, Danish uh, hard boiled candy. Uh, you, you might want to have a tissue ready. Um, so, uh, today's what I'm going to talk about is solving typical. Uh, problems when translating a Joomla site. Well, it's really a camouflage because really what I want to talk about is is the new product that we have just launched, which we believe solve these typical problems. Um, so now that I have your attention, I would like to talk about uh, uh, Neno, our new translation product. My name is Soren Beck Jensen. I am the CEO of uh, of Jensen Technologies. <coughs> And you can follow me on Twitter, and feel free to tweet during this session. Um, if I say anything interesting or stupid or anything like that. So I'm a developer, um, first and foremost, I think. Um, but I also do design and marketing and sales, and, and I manage uh, my company as well. I'm a Joomla enthusiast, uh, like probably everybody in this room. Uh, I speak and I write about Joomla. Uh, I'm a volunteer at the resources directory. Uh, I'm a Google Summer of Code mentor. And I'm a J-Factor winner. That's, that's, that's going to go on my CV and everything now, you know? Um, Jensen Technologies is a company based in Spain where I live, uh, but I'm actually Danish. Uh, and in our company, based in Spain, we speak English. Uh, so it's kind of natural for us to try and uh, tackle these uh, translation issues. Um, we started in 2005, or I started in 2005, and since the beginning we've been 100% focused on Joomla development. Uh, I currently have seven employees, uh, and as I said, we're based in Granada, Spain. We do several different things, uh, not just uh, uh, Joomla websites. Under, under the name not just web design, or not web design, we develop websites for clients. Uh, that part of our business has, we have on purpose been making smaller and smaller because we're more focused on, on doing uh, our own projects, as we call it. Our own projects is automaticbacklinks.com, which is a website that allows you to exchange links with other websites very easily so you get higher in the search engines. That's our biggest, really, area um, and money earner uh, and our most popular service. Uh, component Creator is also very, very popular. Uh, there's no session about it this year, but uh, we're, there's 45,000 Joomla developers building components using Component Creator, and it's also a very uh, popular service. If you have any questions about any of these, uh, feel free to, uh, uh, well, you can ask after, but uh, yeah, feel free to uh, bump into me and, or as Brian say, buy me a beer or something like that. Right, so as I said, I would like to introduce Neno. Um, or Nino, I don't know. Should we have a vote? What's a, how should we pronounce it? Uh, because we're based in Spain, we probably have been calling it Neno, but everybody says, so how's this Nino thing? So I don't know. Uh, huh? Neno. Neno? I agree. All right, we stick with Neno. Um, what we have tried to do is develop a complete translation solution for Joomla. And we really hope and believe that this can be a, a, a really attractive addition to Joomla as a whole and can help um, make Joomla the choice for multilingual, the, the, the absolute defined choice for building multilingual websites. So better than WordPress, better than Drupal, better than any other solution out there. And I hope I, I, I can demonstrate this today. I must say, we launched it on Thursday. 
after working for six months. Uh, so if you can imagine the, the last uh, few days before the deadline. So it's still in beta. It very much, absolutely for sure, has bugs. Um, but we're getting there. Um, and it, it's good enough to install and, and work. So we spent more than uh, 3,600 hours on, on the development of this component. Uh, we've, we've invested a lot of uh, time into coming up with a solution that we feel confident is going to become the de facto standard for translating a Joomla website. Um, it's free and open source. Um, we are going to publish it on GitHub if we haven't done so already while I've been here. Um, and uh, we will have a premium package as well for support, um, a membership for, for a year. Uh, I think we're going to price it 99 euros for a year. Uh, and the, um, the free version in the longer content that you translate manually, uh, we will insert a backlink uh, back to uh, Neno, uh, back to the website, in, in the, some of the larger content items. Um, we have more features than any other solution, which I hope to, uh, to show. So the first thing I want to talk about is what is a multilingual website? Because uh, I think it's important to get that uh, definition right. Um, there is some websites that have different content in different languages. And actually Joomla core is kind of built for that. Um, and, and it works rather well for that. There's still issues that could be made more user friendly. But if you want to set up a website where you have uh, some content uh, in, in English, and then you maybe have only a few pages in Spanish just explaining your product or something like that, but the main website is in English. That's, that's not what we deal with. We deal with translation. So we deal with the same content in different languages. So you have a source language, and you want to make copies of that source language into one or more other languages. So that's an important distinction to make. So we're talking about translation and not about building uh, different websites uh, for different languages. So uh, problems with translating Joomla um, that we uh, have identified and that we uh, hope to solve or have feel that we have solved and, and will be solving. Um, setting up Joomla itself uh, we find problematic. Um, we find it difficult to, to see what needs to be translated, um, to get an overview of, of what actually needs to be translated, um, and also to see when has something changed, because that's a, a major problem when, when you have a multilingual website is translated, that's the source language might change, but then you need to remember to change your target language as well. Um, and what should be translated? Uh, it's currently not really possible to say I only want to translate. I don't want to translate my forum, for instance. It'll keep popping up in the in the solutions that are there now. As well, you still have some content that are not translated. Your forum. So that's another problem we wanted to solve. That you should be able to to specify what should be translation. Then um, I believe that the translation interfaces that are there currently. Uh, are not very user friendly and are not very translator oriented. Um, and then translation coverage, uh, the problem with uh, actually getting everything translated. Um, and that uh, goes for the whole of Joomla and third party extension and language files as well. Um, and then uh, we found that it's very difficult to actually get external translators involved in translating your website because you need to give them access to Joomla and stuff. I'm just quickly running through these points and I'm going to uh, uh, go into details for each of them. And then we found also a performance issue with, uh, with um, some solutions. So let's look at what it, the pro problem number one, setting up Joomla for being multilingual. Here's what you need to do to set up Joomla. Uh, to be multilingual. I'm not even going to read all these. You can read them yourself. Um, but there's a, a lot that you have to do and takes a long time. Even just watching a video of it takes about 20 minutes um, to, to get Joomla up and, and running. I mean, uh, I think there is a solution now for doing that uh, faster. 
Yes, during installation. Yes. No. With if you install Nano, it'll do all of this for you. Um, it it will download and install the language packs. Uh, it'll it'll um, alert you as well if it's out of date and says you know you need to update your language pack. Um, it'll create the content languages, enable language filter. It'll do all of those things for you. Uh, so we we kind of want to when you install Nano, we want to take over everything to do with multilingual and languages and make it easy for you. That's that's our ambition. The second problem um, that we identified is 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 to 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 find out what what currently needs to be translated on my website. What is missing? What what have I not translated? Uh, this is Joomla, and and with Joomla you just you don't know. You just see a bunch of this is actually from the resources directory, which uh, uh, you you'll be uh, recognizing some of this, Anna. Um, you'll be recognizing how difficult it is to find what actually, which content has not yet been translated. There is no way of knowing, really. You have to compare articles uh, next to each other. Um, with KM Fast Trans Pro, uh, they have in, uh, developed an interface that is supposed to help with that, and it does to some extent. You can see uh, kind of um, the different languages, uh, and, and then there's a red status. Um, if it's not translated. So it, it at least can help you search for the strings that need to be translated. Um, Neno has a different approach. We use this. This is the first screenshot you'll see from Neno. Um, we use these bars throughout the application um, where you can see uh, how far you are in the progress of your translation. Um, so, um, for instance, here in, in, in Spanish, you can see overall you're 48% complete. Um, which represents, which is represented by the green bar. Uh, the blue bar is um, because the, I'll talk about that later. But we offer a new method of of, of getting external translations. Uh, so that's, for instance, professional translations. So the blue represents that you have ordered professional translation, but it's not come back yet. Um, so that's the blue section. The yellow section represents uh, strings that have changed in the source language. So, so if you have English as your source language, then you've changed some content, and it needs to be retranslated. Um, and the red is you just haven't gotten around to translate that yet. So those bars are, are throughout the interface. I'll show you some other screenshots later where you can see them. And it gives you a very good overview of what needs to be translated. And you can also, in our translation interface, very rapidly find the strings that need to be translated. If you have any questions, yes. A remark on the this kind of KM fast runs. Uh, there is filtering. I'm correct on that. This is the link is in Facebook or whatever. Uh, there's filters that uh, will select only the articles that need attention for which one source language has been updated. So you can boil down what you see to what needs attention. Yes, yes. And that's what I say. It makes it better. KM fast runs makes it better, um, for sure. Um, right, so the third problem is is setting up and configuring what should be translated because, as, as you say, if, if you have an interface that can show you everything that needs to be translated very easily, it should be possible for you to say, well, I don't want to translate this. So stop keeping reminding me about it. Um, so uh, we have something we call groups and elements, and here you'll see those bars again. So whenever you install a new component or whenever you install Nano on top of an existing website, we will, we will um, go through and figure out which components you have and which content you have and group it into these groups. And each group will have elements. An element is either a, a database table or a language file. Um, and so you can see, for instance, AC Mailing has 19 elements. It's 18 tables and one language file. Um, and you can see that we found 7,675 words inside AC Mailing, out of which you can't see the percentage here. When you hover over, you can see the percentage um, of how much have been translated. Uh, to the right of that, you can see that the assigned translation method is manual. That means you using the interface to translate. But as I said, as, as, and as I'll get into, we offer also that you can order with a click of a button um, either machine translate your whole website, your whole content. Just say, I want my website in German. Boom, you get it in, in mach uh, machine translated in German. Or professionally, I want a professional native translator to translate my website into Russian. 
boom, one click of a button, it uses an API and, 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 and our API, and, and we work with other API providers that have professional translators that will translate it, and it will automatically come back to your website. So that's if you sign a, a different translation method. But really what I wanted to say about this interface is that this is where you decide what should be translated on your website. So by default, when you install, we already have configuration files for all the popular components and for the core components, obviously. Um, so you can see, for instance, uh, in content, uh, we don't want to translate the asset ID. Uh, it makes no sense to translate that. That's a field in that table, and that's the granular effect you have. You can, you can really decide what you want to translate. But we might want to translate the alias. The alias is what forms part of the URL. So in a different language, it might be nice to actually have that as a different uh, uh, word, right? Um, and, and so there's tables and there are fields. Um, so you have, you have pretty full control over how and what uh, should be translated in Denim. Any questions? OK, uh, translation interfaces. Um, Joomla does not have one. If you want to translate core Joomla, then you have to, uh, I don't know, you would have to g open up the original article and copy the article text and then go to and create a new article with a new language and paste it in and then translate or have two monitors open uh, with, or two windows open or something like that. It just, there's no translation interface. And um, this is Giuseppe's translation interface. Um, I believe this is built. Uh, this is built for for the for Joomla administrators. Um, our approach is slightly different. Uh, we we've built our translation interface for translators, um, because it, it, to me this can be a little bit uh, difficult to to get an overview of what actually needs to be translated. Um, but uh, Giuseppe is, is very flexible in the way that it pulls up the translations together. Um, this is uh, Falang. Uh, again, you have some. You have to kind of dig down and try and find what needs to be translated, and then you get an interface like that where you say components and components and and publish and, and so on and so forth. Our, as I said, our approach is totally different. Um, this is our translation interface. Um, basically, I'll, I'm, I'm going to go over here now. Um, this is the main, main really thing to focus on. Right now the filters is open and so it's pushed this down, but normally this would be a lot longer. This contains all the strings that are not translated, that are currently available or in your filter. So the default filter is show me, show me the content that has not been translated from the whole website. And it just loads, not randomly, but it loads uh, strings that needs to be translated. So you can focus on, on the source, copy it over, and, and, and just work on the translation. When you're done, you hit control enter, boom, it saves it, and it loads the next string. It just moves down to the next string, next string, next string, next string. So it's focused on high performance translation, and it mimics the professional translation interfaces of, of uh, well, the, the kind of software that professional translators use on a daily basis. Um, and we're gonna keep improving this interface because it's, it's, to us it's very important. Uh, add more keyboard shortcuts and, and just make it more smooth. All of this is used, uh, loaded using Ajax, and so it's a very smooth experience that uh, we want to make. Yes, question? Yes. Um, why is the HTML why is the um, Because um, our main approach is um, to try and make it as similar experience as it is for professional translators. And professional translators will get that. And professional translators will be taught to not mess with that. If, if you use a, a WYSIWYG editor, it's very easy to mess up the code and, and, and to, uh, to, to really screw up uh, the translation. Um, and that, that's, that's our, our approach. We, we, we on purposely have not added a WYSIWYG. But it might, that said, we might do it in the future. You could, yes, uh, but you'd need to know what you're doing, right? But uh, you could say, for instance, uh, yeah, parameters, um, just load it up, but you'll see JSON, you know, uh, you'd have to. But it's, it's been raised to us, for instance, that Sue uses uh, uh, JSON to store content. So if we want to translate Sue, we kind of need to. So I think we will build a parser for JSON and pass it out into fields. Uh, The, the form, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
I think it's it's uh, something we would like to do. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, well, you wouldn't have an image. You might have a, the URL for an image, because that's a string. But you wouldn't have the actual image. Uh, so, but if you decided to say, I want to translate uh, the, the field URL from whichever table, then that would show up as a, as the URL, and and you could you could change that if you wanted to. Uh -huh. And if I have a, a big image, so it takes the whole string, and then I can put a few pieces. Ah, you not, now I understand what you mean. If there was an image in this text, it would just show up as as HTML. So you would just have the HTML tag. Any other questions? Yes. If I understand your question right, then you're asking if, if you can have more than one source language? No. Um, with Neno, you have to set which is your source language, and you have to generate all your content in that language, and then translate into other languages. Does that answer your question? So you can't switch on the fly? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, uh, the fast part, sorry, I can't. And I found that on Neno Education, uh, typically it's the source language types. Sometimes, uh, it's not something we have. No, you wouldn't. We we wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, I can pretty positively see that that's not going to be part of, of of what we will because of the way we store content, uh, which I'll get to. Uh, that would be practically impossible. So translation coverage. <clears throat> uh, now, I, I've just been uh, told by Yannick that I have completely misunderstood how Josetta works. So, Yannick, feel free to uh, correct me if I'm wrong in any of this. Yeah? Um, and I apologize for that. And I've, uh, I'll, I'll post a tweet later and, and apologize. Um, anyway, um, third party components, uh, if other solutions that are trying to, to solve these problems. The third party components currently uh, need to try and mimic the way Joomla does it by including a language uh, field in the component um, in, in order to be translatable. Uh, KM Fast Trans Pro uh, only supports K2 um, with like a configuration file. So, so it, it doesn't cover everything. It just covers Joomla and K2. Uh, Giuseppe and Falang, is it, so is it correct that Giuseppe supports um, content element files? Uh, don't worry about it. We have plugins that describe behavior of any uh, content element file. Right. And configuration, right. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, Falang requires content elements files. Josetta is more like KM Fast Trans, so it, it mainly supports K2. Um, and nothing exists today that can translate both database content and language files. Um, except for Neno, of course. <laughs> uh, it can translate anything. We can translate any third party component. You install it, it doesn't have to have any configuration. Uh, you could have built it yourself using Component Creator, obviously. Um, and, 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 or, you don't have to. You could have written it yourself. Um, but it, natively, it will just support it because what we, the way we look at it, we just look at the database tables um, and 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 parse the content from the database tables. And we also support translating language files. Yes. What do you mean the actual translation? We've 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 written a, um, a, a database driver that takes over the Joomla database driver. So so when whenever a request comes in the front and we can see it's in a foreign language, 
uh, then we we don't allow the the database request to go into the database table that they were intended to. Instead, we route them to the uh, to the to the language the different language version of that table. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah, it should. It should. Yes, yes. Because we, I'll, I'll get more into that later. The more technical details of what we do with the actual data structure and stuff like that. I think that will probably answer your question. But basically, yes. Uh, the only problem, uh, like we've talked about, is is JSON. I mean, how do you translate that? But I think we can fairly simply create uh, an interface for that. But we just look at content in tables, uh, and and we maintain. So when you save something. Uh, from the front end, for instance, imagine you have a forum, you save something, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but you save something from a forum, then we will save it simultaneously with the same key, with the same index structure into all the language versions of the tables. I'm correct. I was asking what servers are the The basic stack in the article that is, it's not a JSON, it's not I don't know about, as I said, we launched on Thursday, so we haven't really had time to test on, on on the more complicated uh, components here. So, am I correct that this is then not core compliant in the <coughs> sense that should you at one point, whatever is you choose to remove an email, that you will lose all your translation? Yes, yes, case? yes. External translation. Um, this is a unique feature that we offer. Uh, and. And, and we, we kind of feel, felt that one of the problems we had when building multilingual websites was, uh, was that, um, that uh, we, we didn't want to give access to translators, because you know, we only speak so many languages, to actually get Joomla access. Or if you had to, then we had to really spend some time with ACL and rights and stuff like that. So that was a concern of ours, and I'm sure it has been for other people who've worked with multilingual uh, websites. Um, <coughs> So we offer, uh, this is a little bit wrong, but we offer two, two types of external translations within uh, Neno. Uh, one is machine translation, and that's not to be confused with when you're in the interface and you say, just translate this article or this string, that's, that's free. You just have to add your own API key. Uh, what we're talking about here is completely machine translating uh, a, a large chunk of content. It could be a whole website or it could be, um, the way we imagine people will set it up is uh, I will manually translate all my content articles, but machine translate all my forum content and all my comments on the blogs, for instance. You could set it up like that. Um, uh, so, th so that's what we do with machine translation. And, 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 and this is where we hope to make, make a bit of money and make a profit out of this, is, is uh, that we, we charge for the service, right? So per word, we will charge not very much for machine translation, and, and I think professional translation is, is fairly priced as well. So the other is professional translation. You can, with a click of the button, send all your content that needs translation via our API to professional translators who will uh, go through and translate all your content. And when it's done, it'll come back and be saved into your website. And depending on your settings, it can be published automatically as well. Uh, and so we believe this can be a new way to rapidly get professionally translated websites in multilingual in Joomla. Thank you. So, uh, so manual translation, uh, the only free solution I know of is Bing at the moment. Uh, the machine translation, what kind of service does that use in the back end? Uh, which one, the, the, for the manual, when you're doing so, it? So when I should click and translate, I can imagine that Bing is a free service. So you, should you can use either, in the, in the admin interface, you can use either Bing or, no, sorry, uh, Google or Yandex for now. We will add Bing very shortly. Okay, um, Bing is the only one that I know that's free. So no, Yandex is free. Okay. Uh, yeah. And the machine translation, then you bulk upload it explicitly to your servers yes. and then you feed it to either Bing, Yandex or whatever. Yes, correct. See and then feed it back. Yes, correct. <coughs> Any questions? So this is just the interface for ordering these uh, um, 
external translations. You can see you have in the top machine translation and the bottom professional translation. Uh, you can see in, in Spanish you have we have discovered 3,938 words. Everything is words in Neno because that's how it's priced and that's how you get an overview of, of what you actually need to do. Um, and that will cost 3,938 translation credit, um, which is what you need to buy from us. And then there, in parentheses, there's a, a, a price, uh, roughly how much those translation credit will cost you. Um, so uh, the idea is you go and you buy a lump sum of translation credit from us, and that's then assigned to your account, and, and then you spend that translation credit. So it's not like you're buying for two euros here, you're just spending the translation credit you've already bought. Um, and these are the actual prices. You can see if you have 1,203 words you want professionally translated, it's going to cost you 120 euros. Um, there, you can go to our website. It's live. And there is, uh, there's, you can see more about the prices and how all of that works. Any questions? How am I for time? OK. Um, performance. That's. Um, that's uh, the issue I wanted to, to talk about. Uh, I've just added some of these slides this morning because when I've been speaking to people, uh, I've realized I forgot to talk about this. And this is where I've completely misunderstood Giuseppe, so uh, bear with me. Um, so Joomla uses a language field in the table. So whenever you do a query, it'll, it'll say, oh, and the language should be this, and then it'll load from, from that table. That, that's kind of OK. And, and if you develop your component like that, that's kind of OK as well. Um, Third-party translation tools uh, uses a language database. Um, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more. So uh, some existing solutions, I think uh, that would just be Falang then, um, would, would have, so these are not actually databases. I know that's the sign for database. They're more like a table, right? So I'll have a hello table and a world table. And then I would, when I start translating, I would have all my different translated content in one big database. And then I can say, uh, oh, so you don't want to load the English version, but you want to load some worlds, uh, then, then go and find it over in the translation database. So it's a big database, uh, which uh, ob obviously cannot maintain the same indexation and key optimization that, that this uh, table can, can have. Uh, so, so it can make. Um, loading uh, tra translated content very slow on, on bigger websites. For mo I would say, you know, for 90%, it's not a problem. But if you have a bigger website with lots of content or a lot of uh, active users, then it is a problem. Uh, another solution, which actually I think is uh, how uh, the Red Core uh, does it, uh, which is a better solution, um, is to say for each lang no, for each table, I will create uh, uh, another table where I store all the, the, the translated versions in. So, so there you have the world. This becomes then that. And you have hello, and that becomes that. Um, but it still means you cannot maintain the same key indexation. So you can't have the same database optimization in the translated versions. Um, um, I know it's a little bit technical for some people, but just understand that it, it, it can lead to a performance problem if you have lots of users or lots of content. The way Neno does it is that we will make a copy of each table that has translated content in it. So when you are searching for hellos and you actually want to search in Chinese, then we're just searching in the Chinese hello database or hello table. Uh, and, and so that can maintain exactly the same key optimization, exactly the same optimization as the original. Um, and, and that makes for much better performance. Again, it probably doesn't affect 95% of, of sites. But it's, it was something that was important to us because our target is also to, to get larger companies to use this. Any questions? Yes. Yes. Because uh, otherwise you couldn't search. You couldn't, if, if I want to find sort by price, right? Yeah. And price is not translated. But then you don't have the same performance. And that for us was important. You, have of data. you do. You do have duplication of data. And, and, and the backside of, of our way of doing it is you need more hard disk space. But hard disk space is cheap these days. 
and 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 if you can get a much better performance out of this, that was more important for us. Sorry. Yeah, that could be. Uh, um, or we need to work with Akiba to, I don't know, uh, not back up. Yeah. Uh, you would get the original language. Um, yes. Well, it's lucky you can fix it by clicking one button, order translation, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that is, I mean, it, it's up to you. You should not probably publish a language unless it's translated. Yeah, I mean, there is a solution actually. So you just link that content when it's not translated, you mean? Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. No. When you install Neno, the first thing we ask you is, we found Spanish, and by the way, your language file is out of sync, and, and we found some content already in Spanish. Um, we will now move that into our translation tables for optimal performance. If it's stored in, for instance, the, the, the core or any third-party component using the language tag, we will move it into our translation um, shadow tables, and then we will offer you to install any more languages. But no, you, you, you just install it, and Neno will, will guide you through that process. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So how do you handle uh, third-party extensions adding content in the content table, for example? Is it being tracked so it will be... Any, any query that is sent through the Joomla uh, database query, we intercept. So whether or not it's a read or a save or an update or an insert or whatever it might be, we intercept it and say, hey, you might want to you might want to save in this table. And you will, but we're also going to save it into uh, all the others. Sorry, yes? Um, so it's the same with uh, modules, like uh, as discussed, we're using custom modules now. Um, does it translate into text files? There is a, that's a very good question. Um, there's two things we don't translate, but we manage for you. And you have to translate yourself. And it's menus and modules. And it's, the, it's simply impossible in the way that Joomla handles those things with item IDs and stuff like that to keep all of that in sync. So what we do is we, we make sure that when uh, that we create language versions of all menus and uh, all of that is associated correctly. Uh, and the same with modules. We create language versions of any module that is not language version. So you can go into the... Um, into the actual menu manager or into the module manager and translate those content from there. Yeah? For one of my clients, I'm using support and I sometimes have problems with it because they are using English and Arabic. And Arabic, I can't understand any of it. And when you have to find the right page or the right URL or whatever, it's extremely difficult. So I teach them to use the note fields in the modules and in the menu items. Does your solution have the note fields as well? No, but I, exactly for menus and modules, we don't translate those. So you, they they still have to use the, the module and menu manager. So. Huh? Would it be all the other content that's easy to track uh, originally, uh, uh, say, words of the language? If you find that if you look for support. Uh, oh, do you, uh, to ah, uh, I'm not totally sure. I'm not totally sure I understand your question. So you you want to you want to search in Arabic and then find out which is the original article in English or? What? No, I. Uh, I, I, I All right, you <laughs> have to. Okay. Any other question? Yes. That's very, very uh, valid point. And no, you cannot now in this version, but it's probably the next thing we're going to implement. Um, so the question was, for, for people who might not have heard it, if, if uh, I think it's, uh, it's called something uh, in, in translation world, but it's, it's basically giving instructions to the translators, right? Uh, and, and, and to maintain a, 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 a yes, a translation memory. Um, <clears throat> for instance, we, we have very much that problem ourselves. Our, our company is called Not Web Design. So if a translator sees that, they will translate it 
you know, to not web design, <laughs> and and that wouldn't be very good. So it it it, it certainly um, is uh, something we uh, we we consider and and think about, and it probably will be there. Because right now the only thing that's not fully there, it's like 95% there, is the external translations. Um, so uh, when that is properly introduced and we actually start selling this translation credit, I, uh, I'm quite sure it'll have to launch with that because it, it's very important and it's a good point to raise. Any questions? All right. So a recap. Uh, actually, I'm going to skip that because I've just been told it's totally wrong. Um, I think I've recapped enough then, so um, I just want to mention that we currently offer a 50% discount on our premium uh, membership. I think it'll be open for the next 10 days or something like that uh, with the, with the um, what's, uh, what's a coupon code, discount code of a JAB15. Huh? Yeah, difficult to remember. The same, uh, I'll just say the same goes for component creator, uh, same code, 50% discount. Um, and that's about it. Uh, that's all I had to say. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you.